We're continuing our tour of my favorite business process tips and tricks. We come to hyperlinks and record URLs. This is an interesting topic. The record URL, I'll see it in the workflow designer referred to as a record URL dynamic. That, uh, that field was introduced in the November 2011 service update for dynamic CRM. And it's only a feature that's available in the workflow designer. It's, it functions identically as if it were a field on a record in dynamic CRM, but it's not available to, for example, put on a contact form. It's only within the workflow designer that you do it and for workflows and dialogues. And you can combine it. That gives you the URL. But what you can do is you can combine it in certain situations with the insert hyperlink function to give the user a nice formatted hyperlink. So we can put some text in there that the user clicks rather than the rather nasty looking URL uh, that you would have if you just use the record URL um, field by itself. I'll show you how this works. Here's an example of where you can use it. We can use it, for example, in a dialogue, tip text, give the user the ability to navigate to a record with a nice link. You can also use it in the email editor. This is the email editor, remember, in the process design environment. You can't access this function right now current in the current version and if you're just creating, say, an email template for use interactively. So this really is, right now, just a, a business process only feature. So let's go take a look at this. Here we are in the demo environment. And I've got a little dialogue that I wrote to illustrate this. Go to the ribbon. This might look a little bit different than your ribbon experience because I'm running, running at a slightly lower screen resolution to get better slightly larger characters for the recording. Uh, so run workflow and start dialogue. Notice they're available from the process drop down here. So let's go start the dialogue. So here's a dialogue that illustrates these points. Call it the profile and survey customer dialogue. And this is a little bit different than some of the dialogues you might have seen. This uses the prompt text as really just informational. So here's the conversation that the customer service rep might read. Hello, cat. I'd like to make sure we have your correct contact information, et cetera, et cetera. We put some information up here. We do this with dynamic values. I'll show you this in a minute. But over here, we use the tip text and put this navigate to contact record link in there. You can see if I hover over it that the, the text is masking the, that uh, gnarly looking URL on the, on the back in there. If I click that, simply opens up contact form. So then we ask how they heard about us, give a little rating of the overall experience, click next, we're done. It does a couple of things. If I open up the contact record at that point, it attaches a survey response. So I've got a custom record type for a uh, surveys. You can see I've done this a couple of times. So here's the survey response record that, uh, that we just filled in. Okay, so how does this dialogue process work? Let's go take a look at it. Go to settings, processes, and I'll sort by category. There's the profile and survey customer dialog. I'll open it up. Then let's deactivate it so we can make some changes to it. Let's take a look at what this does. So it's a dialog. No options for automatic processes. Remember, dialogs cannot be run automatically. They have to be run on demand. They can also be called as a child process. But for this one, we don't need that option. So I'm going to minimize those things just so we can just look at the steps of the dialogue process. So typical dialogue, the first thing we start with, I usually put dialogues, structure them into stages to make them easier to understand. So in this case here, I've got my stage one profile and survey conversation. Here's the page construct. And you can see that the page consists of several prompts and responses. There's the first one, the contact information. Here's the source 
we looked at, and here's the overall experience rating. So this is stage one. Stage two, what I often refer to as my post-dialog processing stage, what we're doing here is taking the information provided by the user in that conversation, in the dialog itself, and we're using it to create records. So here I'm creating the survey response. I've got a couple of different, sur the way, the, way I, the, the uh, survey response entity is written, I've got different response records for the actual different questions. So I can keep track of the different data types. And then I create a follow-up email, notifying, say, the sales rep or the sales manager or whoever it might be. So let's go back and look at the actual dialogue part of this. In a particular, let's look at this very first prompt. So here's the page. The page contains the prompts and responses. And here's the very first prompt and response that might, this is the one that looks a little bit different than you might be used to because this basically is guiding the conversation. So this first prompt text combines static text with dynamic text to pop up all the contact information there so that the CSR or whoever's having the conversation can confirm it. And then remember it was the tip text on the right hand side that had that hyperlink in it. So how do you build that? Let me delete this and redo it so you can see how to build it. Now in the in a previous demonstration I showed you how to use the record URL. So here's what was introduced in the November 2011 service update. And just to show you how this would look, if I scroll down here, I'm, I just selected the, in the look for, I select contact. So now I have the fields on the contact record because that's what this dialog is written for. If I scroll all the way down to find record URL dynamic, click add and pop that in there. This gives me the unformatted URL. That's not what I want to do because then a user can't click it. They have to copy it to the clipboard and paste it and that sort of thing. That's what this insert hyperlink feature is for. Notice we have it on prompt text too. I could put a link in there, but let's use the tip text. So I just choose that and I will say, click here. That's the text to display. And then I simply use the record URL function here. So basically I'm wrapping the record URL inside this click here hyperlink text. Select that. And then you can see that it just puts it inside this. So there's my dynamic value for the record URL wrapped inside this hyperlink using this markup language. Now, one thing I'll mention in the uh, in the webinar session on May 31st, uh, my friend uh, Muhammad Qureshi, AKA Q, asked a good question. Um, could I take this, say copy that somewhere and paste it use it somewhere else. I mentioned that the, for example, the editor that you'll find in the task, if you're creating a task, uh, doesn't contain that uh, insert hyperlink function. And Q was speculating that it might work to copy this in there and paste, copy this to the clipboard and paste it into somewhere where it's not supported on the editor. It turns out that doesn't work. You can copy it to the clipboard and paste it, but the editor in the, the basically the description field in any other record type can't render this so unfortunately that doesn't work it would be nice if we could be would be able to do that but we cannot do that yet so that's how you put a hyperlink in there save and close now i'll show you one other place where you can use that functionality as well and that's in this email so if i have a create email or a send email steps just to review if i add a step here. Suppose I'm going to add another step after this. Notice I've got two options for email. I can create a record, which is what I've done here. Create, and I'm creating an email record. The alternative is to send email. For illustration purposes, I'll do this. And notice the difference. This create is going to create an email. This actually sends it. The difference is what? Well, this email that gets created is going to be in draft status. It isn't sent yet. So with this function, you have the option of making some changes to the email and then sending it at your leisure. Uh, this one, this create new message, you get the same editor experience. The difference is this sends the email right away, or at least tries to send the email. If you're not hooked up for email, it won't send it, but it'll try to go ahead and try to send it. So if I click set properties on the create email, you'll see here's the editor right with the all the 
functionality that we have here, and we'll look at this in a second. And then if I go to this one, notice it's the same editor experience here. We'll uh, make the resolution just a little bit smaller here so we can see this. So if I were going to do this, not to finish this out, but you'll see here, uh, if I use the insert hyperlink here, notice it's available here. Same exact experience as we saw in the dialog in the process designer. So if I type click here, and here I want to put the URL, say maybe not to the contact record, but how about to the actual survey responses. So I'll choose survey response. Remember, this was cre this is a local value because it was created by the dialog. And every record has this record URL dynamic. And remember, this is just in the workflow design environment. Like that. So that's how I would go about creating one of those in this context of the email editor. Same experience, but just slightly different context. So those are a couple of examples of how you work with uh, hyperlinks and record URLs in Dynamics CRM 2011.